Welcome back. Now, although President Jacob Zuma signed into law the Transport Laws and Related Matters Amendment Bill, giving the go-ahead to e-tolling in Gauteng, opposition against the system has not stopped. Selo Rasitaba has written extensively about why e-tolls are actually good for our country's economy. And he joins us in studio to tell us about his view. Selo, welcome. Welcome to Morning Live. It's good to have you on the program. All right, why is it good for the economy? Why, why do you think that e-tolls are going to help us? Uh, I move from a premise of logistics. I'm involved in uh, part of a company called Mediterranean Shipping Company. Yeah. From South Africa, we are the second largest a shipping company in the world and we are their partners here in South Africa. Now what is happening is that we are competing with the rest of the world to trade internationally. Yeah. Somebody who produces tomatoes in Zanin and is competing with somebody who produces tomatoes in Brazil. If those goods arrive on time at lesser cost at a market in Beijing, they will buy the ones that are cheaper. Mm. Ours are not cheaper because the roads are not good, the cost of paying for the truck is not good. Then our government then decided to say that in order to perfect this, why don't we improve the road system and make sure that the trucks don't go through potholes, they arrive at the port on time so that we can compete with that farmer in Brazil. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's why you feel. But, but these roads that, that perhaps have been told that we are looking at here in Johannesburg, I mean, uh, yes, they are major highways. They, they weren't in the worst condition to begin with. I mean, there are far worse off roads here in South Africa, you know, where you're taking from, from the source into the cities and into the ports. I mean, you, you, let's just take the Eastern Cape, in, for example, as a road where people mm. are crying for those roads to be sorted out. Um, if, if we take your theory into consideration, yes. why are those, ro those roads not being sorted out? So we can do exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I was surprised yesterday when the Transvaal Agricultural Union said they will join the coalition against the tolls. Let me just give you an example of what happened last year in December, mm. which caused me to do this research. I was on holiday, I get a call that about six trucks cannot get into the port of Cape Town because first it was congested, two, they were getting tickets from the provincial government so the ship could not leave on time. Now. These trucks were carrying grapes from a place called Kakamas in the Northern Cape. Yeah. Because of the congestion, the roads that are not in good shape, that's what was happening. Then I looked at a research that was done by the World Economic Forum. They say, if you remove barriers to trade, that is border control, good road infrastructure, etc., you can increase the gross domestic product of, a, of the world sixfold. You don't need to come up with taxes and all those things to make sure that that truck arrives on time. Just make sure that the farmer is able to take his product to the market, then the farmer creates jobs. Mm. The truck is able to get to the port, then the driver has got a job. The truck driver is not fined, which increases the price of those grapes. And then we can then compete with people from California or whatever for our wine and grapes overseas. Yeah. So that is really the motivation to say, let us not look at the tolls in isolation. Let us look at these things that are said to be barriers to trade, to say that right now we have got difficulty, for example, trading with our neighbors, be it Zambia, Malawi, etc., because the road systems there are not of a quality that we have here. It takes long to take a product from Ndola in Zambia to the market in Jobek than from Durban to London because the shipping system is efficient. You have got all that logistics, but it will take longer because of our border control, our roads across the borders. Yeah. But if we go on this infrastructure program 
and extend it. You believe it'll help? It will so assist. So we yeah. pay our taxes. You pay your taxes. I pay my taxes. Surely that is what I'm paying for. Um, I'm already paying for it. I, I, I'm paying on my petrol to use the roads. I'm paying my taxes like a good citizen does. And, um, and now over and above this, and we know that South Africans at a time like this are exceptionally cash strapped. And yeah. this is going to increase a lot of our living costs and prices that are going to directly impact us on shelves everywhere across because of what you're talking about. Um, why is it that we have to cover this? Uh, Leon, two weeks ago, everybody in South Africa was praising the Minister of Finance. Why were we praising him? Because he was able to balance the books of the country. Mm. Was able to say that this is where the revenue is coming on from, this is where I'm spending on. Now the Minister of Finance has balanced the books. It all plus the taxes that you are talking about, plus the fuel levy, plus the alcohol tax and everything, go into the port. So the eaters are but a small percentage of all this revenue port. You see, now politically, people are taking advantage. Why they don't choose the fuel levy or they don't choose uh, the income tax or the company tax is mm. too high. I am now selfishly say and deliberately saying that if we improve our road system, whether you do it through e-tolls, etc., and the government, and through this Minister of Finance that the whole of South Africa has been praising, say, in balancing our books, South Africa shall be prosperous and will have more jobs. So let us not look at e-tolls in isolation. Mm. There are other set of revenue, then we can have a decent debate. Mm. All right. Yeah. A, a lot of people, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at comments from, from the article that you wrote in the business report, and I, I haven't seen one positive, <laughs> one positive form of feedback as yet. Yeah. And most people asking, do you have any interest in it? I've got no interest except to say that I am really interested in supply chain logistics. Mm. About a month ago, I was teaching an MBA class in Iowa in the United States. Yeah. And you look at that hub in Chicago and how goods leave Chicago, or from the mid Midwest, reaches Los Angeles, Houston, New York, because the road system is good and the goods arrive on time at the markets. I envied that. I said, only if my country can have such a road system. Of course, I'm not talking here from a populist point of view. Absolutely. And it's only that I think why some men can come up with things and sit back mm. and remove themselves from the popular things. But that's why I say the funny thing is that the Transvaal Agricultural Union, I hope those people are their members in Kakamas, the grape farmers. Yeah. That are, how can they support the boycott business in South Africa? Their goods arrive late from over the border. They support anti e mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm on the right side. I'm a lonely voice, but I think the government, and that's where the problem comes, must come out of this and communicate the positiveness of infrastructure and economic development and employment. All right. Salam Rasitaba, thank you for coming forward. Thank you for talking to us and sharing your views. Uh, we, 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 we welcome all views here on Morning Live. And if you'd like to read Selo's article, um, it's in the, uh, it was in the business report. Um, it was on the 10th of May, actually, this year. So it was quite a while ago. But um, obviously the position still standing. Uh, if you visit the website iol.co.za, you'll be able to read it there on the business report section. Just search for uh, Selo's name. You'll, you'll read more about what he feels about e-tolling and the benefits to the economy here in South Africa.